Hey guys, here is the tutorial that you requested um, for my little holiday tutorial giveaway. Um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for following me and supporting me and um, I really appreciate all of your um, kind messages and words of support and for sharing my work and for following everything that I do. I wouldn't be able to do um, what I do without such great support from you and I appreciate it so much and this is sort of one of the ways that I wanted to try and give back by um, giving you guys a free uh, little tutorial on how I create one of my images and you requested um, this one which is uh, caffeine storm which is uh, actually a fairly simple edit um, but I'm happy to go through it and show you how I created it um, so we'll go first into the images you used to create this um, and if I just go into um, the raw files here you'll see that um, it started off with sort of this portrait side this portrait image um, it has this little espresso cup uh, resting on a little block there just to give it a bit of height um, and then just a lot of me dropping actual coffee beans um, from the sky um, so unfortunately some coffee beans were harmed in the making of this image um, I regret that very much because um, no coffee should be lost but um, the image has gone on to live a better life so I feel not so bad about um, using up some of that coffee for the photograph. So I'm gonna show you how uh, we're gonna go about editing this and I've already opened up the base image here which is just one of these shots from the raw files. Um, and what I did first was I set the focus here on this um, image of the cup. And so that's where I wanted um, the focal plane for this image to be. I wanted it to be like a little miniature version of myself. So you can see um, here that it's a little version of myself holding this coffee mug. and when you create an image like this where it is a, a miniaturized version, you really want it to be that forced depth of field, almost like a tilt shift. Um, some people ask me if I use a tilt shift lens or an effect, and it's not using a tilt shift lens, it's just um, having a very shallow depth of field. So using a lens that will allow you to go down to 1.8, 1.4, even lower, 1.2, um, that's gonna help give you that really shallow depth of field and it's gonna help you um, create that forced depth of field where it really feels like um, what you're looking at is a small, small version of something. And so what I've done is I uh, set the focus here on this image um, with the coffee cup and it's given me that nice fake, or that nice um, low or shallow depth of field. So you can see like there's this very narrow depth of field where just this little strip here is in focus. And uh, that's how we're going to create that effect of, of me being a smaller version of myself. So what I've done is I've opened up the first image, which is this, this image here. And you can see that in the finished image, it's, it's about an eight by 10 um, sized image. So what I'm gonna do is go up to image, canvas size, and then just clicking on the bottom here, it's gonna make sure that when I expand the canvas, it's gonna go up and out instead of uh, down and around. So you can go to inches, you can go to centimeters, you can go to pixels, whichever one you want. Uh, I'm just gonna go into centimeters here. I'm just going to increase it. Um, I always kind of just guess by the numbers that I'm putting in, but I usually kind of just increase it by double or more just to give myself more canvas to work right, and then you can crop yourself down. The reason why I'm doing this is because I like to expand my canvas to give myself more negative space to work with. You can see that there's quite a bit of negative space on both sides of me here. If I didn't do that, we'd have such a narrow plane, we'd have such a narrow canvas to work with that it would be really squished and it would take up a lot of the space in that image. But by expanding the canvas, we're allowing ourselves a bit more room to breathe and a bit more room to create. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, build out the rest of our canvas. So we can go to another one of our images here, which is uh, right here. And we're going to just open that up, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it on as a new layer. You can do this uh, through Photoshop. You could definitely use Photoshop to uh, auto merge your files. And how to do that is you would select all of the images here. This is in Bridge. You can select all of your images, go up into Tools, go into Photoshop, and go into Photo Merge, and it'll allow you to automatically merge these all together. Um, it's one way to do it. It's not bad to do it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, this is a really quick and easy uh, image to merge together. And so I think I'll just quickly do it uh, by hand. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm using layer masking. And if you're not familiar with layer masking, it is uh, one of the tools or one of the uh, effects in Photoshop that I use the most. Um, and it's essentially just erasing with uh, room for error or erasing with uh, the ability to take back what you've done. When you use the eraser tool and you erase something, it's usually gone forever unless you undo what you've done. But using a layer mask, which is just down here, this little square with a circle in it, um, allows you to paint on black anything that you want to take away. So I've put this new layer here. You can see it added on top. And what I'm doing is I'm just painting away where it meets the other layer. Now, if I start painting over here, you'll be able to see that it is actually taking away that layer. If you want to bring it back, you can just click on white and paint over anything that you want brought back. That's a very very basic <laughs> um, layer masking tutorial. There's tons of them online um, and you can definitely check those out. Um, layer masking is such a great way to uh, do a lot of things in Photoshop, whether it's um, adjusting select colors, adjusting select features in an image, um, layering your images just like this, doing compositing. It has so many uses and I suggest if you're not familiar with layer masking to start and just practice. And this is an easy one to do to practice. So I'm just going to uh, open another one here and just layer on uh, the right side as well. Just like that, copy and pasting, just kind of putting it where it should go. Um, I'm going to say somewhere right, right there. Again, hitting that layer mask button and just painting on black, just painting over what I don't want to show. And when you get to about where you want to be, so we're going to say right about there, it's looking pretty good. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, fill in the rest of the image. So you can see that I don't really have any um, images of this blank colored wall. And in the finished image, it's almost like this uh, plain gray wall in the background. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the, the eyedropper select tool, select a color that's in the image, and just create a new layer and just paint on over top of all of these layers. And that's just going to help fill in that canvas. And I can add in a texture. I can change the color of that later. It's just sort of to give myself um, the canvas from the very bottom, working my way up to the top. It's sort of like painting a, a primer coat over a canvas if you're painting a landscape or painting a wall even. Um, so I'm just going to take a second <laughs> to do that. Um, computer's running a little slow today. So as you can see that all of the images, all the components of this image were um, shot all at once. So I always try and shoot my images. If I'm shooting a composite, I try to shoot everything at the same time in the same light. I don't have a studio. I do tend to work mostly with natural outdoor light. And so um, I try to con keep everything controlled and I try to keep everything that I'm shooting um, in the same conditions. Uh, if you can, I suggest uh, doing that. If you can't, always just try to make sure that when you are shooting for a composite that you're trying to match the conditions as much as you can. So you'll see that this part is shot right up against that same wall. It's actually not in focus, I don't think. Um, <laughs> and all of these parts are uh, shot against the same kind of wall in the same conditions, the same settings. Um, I'm just going to get actually one of these images that should be in focus. That's definitely not in focus. I think we'll go with this one, maybe? I don't even know which one I used in real life. Not that one. <laughs> Alright. Maybe it was that one. I don't know. We're just gonna guess. Okay. So now you can see that I've uh, filled in some of that blank wall there. So just in the background, it's it's sort of the same uh, gray color. Um, and if you have spots here where you have extra bits and you didn't take enough shots to expand that frame, there's lots of ways you can go around that. You can use the clone tool. You can clone that in. So just using this little stamper guy over there, you can select any other part of the image and just clone it right over. Um, just be careful that nothing is repeating. So anytime that you clone, whether it's grass or trees or even cement here, anytime that you pick up something and you drop it down, 
and it forms a very obvious repeating pattern, our eyes are going to pick up on that because our eyes tend to gravitate towards um, same things or repeated patterns. So if I picked up this little spot and did it here and did it here and did it here and you'd see that same effect, you will eventually notice that that happened and you don't really want to do that because you want it to look like a natural effect. Um, it doesn't really matter here, you can't really tell. You can kind of see that there's a couple of those little pebbles that are in the same spot and if you were really particular you could go in and, and make sure that nothing looked like it was uh, in, in the same spot twice, but I'm not too bothered about it right now. So you can see now that we've got our blank canvas, so this is where we're going to start from. And So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of these layers and I'm going to put them into a group and I'm going to just call that background. That way, all of that background is out of the way. Sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming when you're looking at a lot of layers. So I try to keep them contained and I try to keep them in folders so it's easier to look at. So the next part that we're gonna work on is our portrait side. So I am going to grab one of these. I don't know which one is actually in focus or even which one I used in real life. I'm gonna say this one. I think that my shot is slightly out of focus, but that's okay. So I've just done a really quick lasso around that image, and I'm just going to paste it right on top. So you can see now that if we start putting this right where our focal plane is, it becomes easier to see where we want our image to be. So you can see that there's this little tiny bit of a focal plane here. That's exactly where we want to put the feet of this image, so right about there. So if we zoom out, you'll be able to see that it in fact is on that little plane of focus. So now we're going to go back in and we're going to do some more layer masking. So again, just this little button down here, this uh, rectangle with a circle in it, gives us this white square. Now if we make sure that we're using a brush on black, and I always try to make sure that I'm using a kind of a rather hard edged brush, so somewhere above 70%. And we're going to go in there and we're just going to start getting rid of that wall in the background. There are a ton of different ways that you can select our objects, and I know that someone is going to say, why didn't you do it this way? Um, but I think whatever way that you're most comfortable doing, whatever way you're most familiar doing, do it. it does, there's no real right or wrong way of creating a photograph, I don't think. Um, that's why I love Photoshop so much is that there's so many different ways um, to do the same thing. There's many different roads to get to the same destination and it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you're getting to a place that makes you happy and that you're um, happy with the results. So I'm just going to go around all the edges here. I'm doing this a lot faster than I normally would. I normally would really go in there and make sure that I'm getting all of those um, lines really nice and crisp, making sure that I'm not, you know, bumping into anything and getting rid of anything that looks like it's important. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you um, that layer masking is how I end up compositing. Um, again, this is just sort of like erasing, but you have forgiveness. So if I was not paying attention or if I sneezed or if someone tried to scare me and I slipped and I went like that, if you were to erase, you'd have to undo what you just did, but with layer masking, if you just switch your brush over to white and paint back over it, it is right back to where you want it. It's really great for doing fine-tuned editing, so when you go into those little spots and you really, really want to make sure you get into those little folds of fabric or in hair or trees or whatever, and you make a mistake, it's so easy just to flip back and forth and just get those, um, those layer masks really nice and crisp and really... Uh, well done. So I'm just going to keep going down here, going around the shoes. Again, you can use a lot of different techniques. You can use a lot of different um, functions in Photoshop to select out um, layers. You can use the pen tool, you can use the lasso tool, you can use the magic wand tool. There's so many different ways to do it and I'm not ever going to judge anyone on the way that they use it or don't use it or or prefer to use it because I probably do something that's the hard way but because that's the way that I know how to do it and I'm comfortable doing it I'm gonna stick with it. So I'm just gonna keep layer masking. Um, like I said I do this probably in every um, 
in every photograph. It's something that I think if you're doing any sort of compositing or any sort of um, kind of two images combined into one, um, layer masking is really going to be where it's at for you. Um, and you can spend a lot of time really getting right in there and getting it all finished. Before layer masking, I, I definitely used the eraser tool and you know, when you make a mistake, it's kind of heartbreaking if you can't go back and fix it. So it's always good to uh, use functions that are easily recoverable if you do happen to make a mistake. So in case you're wondering, I am using a Wacom or Wacom tablet, an editing tablet, um, and I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud. I've been using Photoshop ever since I started in photography, and I've been using a tablet for pretty much the same amount of time. Um, I've had various um, tablets over the years, and I'm just using actually one of the cheaper models, um, just the Bamboo Wacom tablet. It's lightweight, it's small, um, it's easy to travel with, and I've had this one for about two years now, and um, aside from the dog chewing the pen, and having to get a new one, it's not done anything uh, bad or it's not failed me in any way. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. Um, if you're interested in getting a tablet, uh, you can get them starting at just a hundred, I, th I think around a hundred dollars or somewhere around there. And uh, they're really, really useful. Um, if you're ever doing any sort of layer masking like this, or you're doing any sort of compositing or you're doing any retouching, um, it's so much nicer to use this than using uh, just your mouse or your trackpad. You can also get, and I have it set up on my iPad, on an iPad Pro, you can download a program called um, just a second, Duet, I believe it's called, and um, you can sync your iPad Pro and your i Apple Pencil, I <laughs> forgot the name of it, um, to Photoshop to use as a second screen. So instead of um, using a Wacom tablet or Wacom tablet, you can actually use your iPad as the tablet and it shows you the image right on the iPad as you're editing. Um, for me, I, I'm just getting the hang of it, so I haven't been using it that much because it is just a little bit different, um, but I do definitely enjoy it. And I think for traveling, especially to, to bring one less screen or one less um, you know, object with me traveling is, is going to be really nice. And so I'm looking forward to um, just using the oops, using the uh, iPad. Um, I do tend to do most of my edits and colors in Photoshop. Um, the very rare time I will take an image into Lightroom to finish the color editing, but for the most part, I'm comfortable doing all of my edits um, within Photoshop. Just in case you're wondering what other programs I use. Made a little bit of a mistake there. Like I said, I'm going a lot faster than I normally would. Um, but if we zoom out, you can see now that we have the beginnings of our image. So final image, getting there. We have uh, the me part of it here. So the next part is going to be our coffee mug. So I can just open up this image. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer on that new image. So the image, uh, this one of our coffee mug when it decides to open. We're going to select that out and you can select this however you want. You can just do the lasso tool like I do. Again, probably the hardest way possible, but that's okay. And we're just gonna make it a lot bigger. So you can see here that it's quite a little, quite a bit bigger than the rest of me. That's what we're just gonna do here. We're just gonna hold the shift key while we're dragging up that little corner box and we're just gonna make it a, quite a bit bigger. Um, I think it's somewhere probably around there. I'm just going to place it right into my arms, like a baby. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use our layer masking on black, and we're just going to first just go around and get rid of all of the extra bits around our coffee mug. So going around the edges here, going around the bottom. This will be a lot faster because it's a little less intricate, although sometimes those straight lines are the ones that get you. Perfect. Uh, yeah. 
No, there we go. Again, I'm going a little bit faster than I normally would. Because I feel like there's probably nothing more boring than watching someone else play a mask. It's like watching someone paint a wall. On average, I would say that an edit... Um, I'm turning this into like a Q&A video now. On average, I would think that I spend probably anywhere from an hour all the way up to five or six hours per edit, um, depending on the image. Um, sometimes it's rather quick. Um, and I don't have to do that much to it to kind of get it to where I want it to be. Um, other times when I don't actually know how to get to the final result that I want, um, it does take a bit of time, and, and it definitely depends on the mood you're in, too. I found, I found that over the years that uh, if you're not in the right mood, you can definitely uh, kind of edit your images a lot differently than you would be if you're in a good mood. Um, or if you're stressed, then you can kind of see it reflected in your, your images. So if I'm, you know, in a good mood and feeling like I want to edit, then I can usually get things done fairly simply and fairly quickly, um, in maybe an hour or so. I usually do tend to, um, sit on an image overnight and go back to it first thing in the morning, um, with a fresh mind, and usually that's when you're going to find anything that you feel like you need to fix or um, remove or replace or tweak or anything like that. So definitely I suggest taking like just an overnight or a couple of hours to look at an image. So we're getting there. Final image here. So now our next step is to obviously we want to get rid of this hand because we don't want that hand in the image. So I'm just going to mask that out. But we do want this arm, and so what I'm going to do is just lower the opacity here to about 59. There's two ways that we could go about this. We could actually go in and use our mask, so this one. We can paint over the part that we want to show here. So we can just go and do this. I'm going to do this super quick just to show you. It's not going to be that pretty at the end. <laughs> wow. Um, we click this again. It selects in that um, little bit of a picture there. And then if we paint over that in black, it will reveal my hand. So if we bring that back to full opacity, 100%, you can see that it's brought back <laughs> my hand and <laughs> quite a bit more. And then you can go in and uh, do your fine tune masking to fix it. The other way would be just to lower the opacity and just to paint um, right on top. But I've already gone this far, so I'm just going to keep going with this. So all we have to do is using our um, black brush. Oh. Photoshop's thinking about something. And I don't know what. Okay. So, we're on a black brush. We're just going to continue to get rid of any of the. Um, well, first, we kind of want to get rid of. What? Why did it change to that brush? The joys of being left-handed. It just pushes buttons on my <laughs> trackpad. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on to our white brush, and what the white brush is going to do is it's going to take away um, where we've painted over that little bit of skin and stuff. So wherever you see that background, we're just going to paint over and get rid of it. Again, not doing this as nicely as I probably normally would, but I'm hoping that you get the idea of what I'm doing. So, we're almost done. Again, the brush is like a rather hard-edged brush, just because... Um, if you use too soft of a brush, it's going to give you really soft edges, and it's going to make it look a little less realistic when you're layering or combining two images together. So 
that's not the prettiest, but it will do. So if we zoom out, you can see now that I'm sort of holding this cup, um, but there's a few more things that we can do to make this look even more realistic. First thing is to fix down there because I don't know what I did, but okay. So first thing is to add shadows. The shadows are going to be what help give this the um, realistic effect. So imagine wherever my hand and my body are connecting to this cup, there's going to be a natural shadow. Anytime that you have um, sort of two objects connecting it anyway, there's going to be a bit of a shadow. So above our layer here of myself, I've added in a new layer, and we're going to call that shadows. And we're going to hover over top of it holding the Alt key, and you'll see that there's this little square with an arrow pointing down. If we click on that, it's a clipping mask, and so what that's going to do is anything that we draw now is only going to appear on this layer of me. So you can see if I try and draw over here, nothing's showing up. Over here, it's showing up just on me. So I'm going to use a rather soft brush now, so going right back down to zero. I'm going to change the opacity up there to 15% and change this to overlay mode. And we're on black here, and then I'm just going to start painting in some of those shadows. So right here underneath the cup, I'm just going to start painting in a bit of a shadow. And I'm going to paint in a bit of a shadow underneath here as well. And under my arm, and under my shirt here. And maybe a bit on my neck. And kind of build it up just like that. If I zoom out, you'll be able to see now that there's this little bit of a shadow that now helps make it look a little bit more realistic. We also need to do the same thing to the cup. So we're going to add in a layer above the cup. We're going to create our layer mask. We're going to call it shadows. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to paint these shadows of my hand underneath where my hand connects with the cup. And you can see as I do this where I failed <laughs> because uh, there's some little white spots that I have to fix, but it's showing you at least, uh, yeah, that's not the greatest job ever. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. But you can see now that it's at least giving you the idea that it is helping to place the objects together and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, change the opacity to 10 and just paint in a bit more shadow underneath just like that and then add a little bit of shadow to the right side there. So now that I've gone and done that, we can go back in and fix some of those um, spots that are showing. So just going back in with our layer mask um, and just sort of fixing some of those little mistakes um, in here. So if we go in, oops. Yeah, that's not the best masking job I've ever done, but it'll do. So I'm actually going to also put in a little bit of shadow underneath my hand there, just to help it connect. I definitely would have gone in and done a better job masking, but for the case of this tutorial, you will be able to see how this is starting to piece itself together. I'm just going to fix this a little bit here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oops. There we go. That's looking a little bit better now. There's that little bit in there that I want to get out, but... It's so small. So you can see if I zoom right in how choppy I made that. But that's the great thing about layer masking is that I can go right in and fix it.
Okay, so that looks a little bit better. If we zoom out, we can see that that shadow really did help give it more of an effect that it was being um, held. And so if I just paint in, whoops, I paint in a little bit more um, shadow there on the edge of the cup where it connects and just underneath, that's really going to help give it more of a placement. You can see that on here there is that bit of a shadow underneath as well. So now we need to add a shadow onto the background. So we're going to go into our background group. Again, create that new layer, call it shadows. And we're going to do the same thing, making sure it's on overlay mode and just painting in right underneath the feet here. Just painting in a shadow underneath the feet. So anywhere that the, the two objects connect, you're going to want to make it a darker shadow. So underneath the feet there, and then just kind of a broader shadow, just like that. So now we can start um, going in and adding in our coffee beans. So if we grab one of these images, all we really need to do is kind of grab these um, little images and we can copy them and paste them. So we can paste them right on to the very top here and just place them whoops, wherever we need them to be in our image. So we can put them sort of anywhere we want. You can see here in the image that I've sort of just grabbed them and uh, started placing them all around the image. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm just using the magic wand to get rid of the background just so we can use um, those just where the coffee beans are. So you can see that I've selected a lot of different options for the different um, coffee beans here. That way you have variety. You don't ever want it just to be the same one over and over and over again, because like I said, um, our eyes will pick up on the fact that there's a lot of the same same ones facing the same angle and that sort of thing. Um, so I do have lots of different shots here. You can see that there's ones of varying um, blur and ones of varying size um, and if I go in you can even see that I shot a lot more than the ones I've even picked for this, this tutorial. So you can go through and really pick the ones that you want to use um, in an image. So again just shoot um, and do as much as you can in, in the right time and you can uh, definitely get all the stuff that you need. So I'm going to use this one as well because I want that coffee bean right at the top. This one. So if I go in and select that one and copy it and paste it onto this layer, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create that effect that, like this one where there's a couple that are closer to the um, screen if you will. And the reason why I do that in images is if it's almost helping with that force depth of field. Um, what that does is it helps you really believe that what you're looking at is part of the scene. Um, when you put things kind of closer and more blurred and back and more blurred, it really helps place this. If it was just this scene, it would look very stagnant. But if you create this four step to field where you can kind of put objects closer to the screen and blur them so it gives you that effect, it really does help make you feel like you... Um, belong in the photo itself. So I always try and uh, make things look as though you're watching a scene happen in real life. So it's this blend between kind of what's real and what's not real. And by putting these coffee beans kind of closer and, and kind of in different perspectives, it really does help give you that effect that you're watching um, this little scene happen rather than it just sort of being a manufactured photograph, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a couple more of those blurred ones. You can see in the final image that I think I have like maybe two or three that are really close to the edge of that one and this one. And then there's lots that are sort of um, all around. And so we can keep going around and we can keep selecting our 
little coffee beans here and just pasting them in. Um, once you get you know a fair amount you can um, end up just copying the ones that you've already put and just rotating them around. So if I go through and I just pick a couple of other ones. So now what I'm going to do is just um, I'm going to just copy this one and just keep using that one um, and just rotate it around. So if I zoom in, we can just kind of rotate this one there. If we go into this one and we take that one and copy it, and then we can move it down here maybe and rotate it. And again, we're just going to go through and grab a whole bunch, copy and paste them. Because they are being rotated and they're not just kind of copied of the same angle, the same size, in the same position, our eyes are probably not going to notice that we're just sort of using the same ones. So if we go back to the original, you can see that I've done that quite a few times. So I've tried to make it look like all of these coffee beans are falling um, from the sky. And this is literally all I did is I just went through and um, selected all the different ones. They have that blur effect because I used kind of a, an open shutter just to make it look like they were actually falling from the sky. So we just go through. I'm just quickly using the um, magic wand just to select away the wall color there. And we can just move those wherever we need to. We can put them here, we can make them bigger if we want. Just holding the shift key and making them bigger. That gives you sort of an idea of where we want those to be. And then the last effect really is to do the coloring. So you can see that this is a little bit um, more vibrant than this image. So how I usually do my coloring, and first I'm going to just group these all together. So I'm going to just put this as um, main effects or subject. I can't spell this one. Coffee. That way it's all in one group and I don't have to kind of fight to find it. This is going to be our adjustment. So I'm going to go down here and the first thing I always do is curves layer. So I'm applying a curves layer to the whole image and you want a nice S curve. So when you create that nice S curve it's really going to punch up those highlights and make those um, shadows a lot more contrasted and you can see that that's what's happened here. So right away that's already helped um, sort of our image look a little bit more um, kind of well balanced. So without a bit faded with it's already a bit more contrasted and the highlights are a lot more obvious. The next thing I always do is selective coloring and this allows you to um, play with the select color channels of your image. So down here you have black so you can adjust the blacks. So you can make those blacks a lot darker or a lot lighter. Um, I'm just going to slide this down a tiny little bit. You can add color into your shadows. It's kind of your own personal taste of where you want um, this to go. I think what I'm going to do is go into the white and just add, you can see here there's a tiny little bit of look, almost like red. So I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of magenta and a tiny little bit of yellow and that's going to help me get to those um, same tones there. You can go ahead and play with all the different colors. You can add some more um, yellow into the shirt there. You can change the color of the shirt just by sliding those sliders around. Um, however you would want to, you can. And I think that's probably as close as I'm going to get to, you know, redoing the whole image. If I go in and crop it, um, just by creating a little selection here and I crop this image so it's closer to the same size, hopefully it ends up looking as close to the image as I can get. Um, this The Caffeine Storm image is actually about four years old now, um, which is hard to believe. It's been four years since I made that image, but I still have all the files which is good, <laughs> just in case I need to recreate the image. Um, but you can see here, 
Um, there's the original. Here's the one that I just made. So there's a bit of difference, but it's pretty close to the same thing. Um, I just kind of changed the perspective so you can see that in this, in the original, there's a lot more white space on the top than there is on the bottom. Um, so if I were to redo this, what I could do is I could uh, go back in, increase the canvas size again to maybe 450. And then that's going to help me match that kind of negative space that I had in there before. So if I went back in to where my background is, and just add it in some more of that gray color. What that's going to do is help me get back to where that uh, that crop was and, and the perspective that I had in the original. Um, I'm not worried about getting it perfect because I'm not going to be using the copied image for anything, but it does show you a little bit more about how I get to that effect. Um, so it's layer masking, it's shooting with an open aperture or, or a shallow depth of field to help you get that nice narrow plane of field. Um, it's shooting everything at the same time in the same light in the same environment and then it's using uh, layer masking and brushing to add in those shadows and to really give you that um, kind of realistic effect as you're doing your compositing. So I hope that that helped. I hope that that uh, gave you a little bit of insight into um, how I create my images. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for um, for supporting me and for enjoying what I do. Um, I enjoy creating and I enjoy sharing it with you. And um, I enjoy reading your comments and, and your messages. And, and not a day goes by where I don't feel incredibly lucky to be able to do what I do. And it's all because of the amazing support that I get from people just like you. And I hope that you learned something. Um, if you try out a technique like this, please uh, tag me in it, share it with me, show it to me. Um, I'd love to see it. So thank you again so much and have a great holiday and a great 2017.